students, so this note is going to be on two sections. First, we're going to talk about rational numbers and the opposites of rational numbers, which is on page 24 of your math notebook, you know, the yellow one. And then we're actually going to go back to the page, previous page, which is page 23. And I'm going to talk about how to graph some of these points. Okay, then what we are going to do is go to page 21 and um, talk about the absolute values of absolute value of an integer. Okay, then we're going to finish the lesson by going back to page 24, the bottom half and talk about the absolute values of rational numbers. Okay. All right. So first we are on top of page 24. And the title of it says identifying opposites and absolute values of rational numbers. Okay, so last time when we met, I taught you how to what opposite numbers are. And just in, just in case you, you kind of forgot, first of all, integers are um, whole numbers, which starts from zero through five, like zero, one, two, three, four, five, and their opposites. So negative one, negative two, negative three, all of these numbers are considered integers. What are not integers? Fractions are not integers and decimals are not integers. So they kind of have to be like full numbers. Okay. Now what are opposite numbers? Opposite numbers are um, numbers that are the same distance from zero, but on the opposite side. So for example, positive three, and negative three are opposite numbers. They're both three units from zero. Negative two and positive two are opposite numbers. They're both two units from zero. Okay, so uh, they have the same distance, but they are located on the opposite side. Okay, now, so today we are going to first talk about identifying the opposite of rational numbers. Rational numbers are um, integers, but it also includes fractions as well as decimals. Most fractions and decimals, there are some exceptions. However, we're gonna cover them more in detail on Wednesday, I mean, I'm sorry, Thursday and Friday, okay? So very basic way, I want you to think about rational numbers as basically all of the integers as well as fractions and most decimals, okay? Because there are some decimals that are not considered rational numbers. Okay, my writing is not that neat. Okay, so I'm gonna try to do a better job. Sorry, it's a, it's a little late at night and um, I'm getting a lot of um, text messages right now. So I'm a little distracted, okay. So I'm gonna try to focus here. Um, so rational numbers and opposites on a number line. So basically we talked about finding the opposites of integers, like such as negative three and positive three, one's positive and one's negative, and these are opposite numbers. Um, opposite numbers of rationals work the same way. So over here, if you look at the example right here, two and three fourths and negative two and three fourths are opposites. And if you think about it, here's zero, two and three fourths is two and three fourths units away from zero, but it goes to the right side. And negative two and three fourths also goes two and three fourths units from zero, but it just happens to go um, to the left side of zero, okay? They're both the same distance from zero, but on the opposite side, okay? All right, so with that, um, I'm gonna answer these questions. What are the opposites of the following numbers? Well, opposite of seven is negative seven. Opposite of negative three and five tenths is positive three and five tenths. Opposite of positive two and 25 hundredths is negative two and 25 hundredths. And opposite of nine and one third is negative nine and one third. That's it, okay? All right, so with that, um, 
I am going to go to the previous page, which is page 23. And the direction says, graph each number and its opposite on a number line. So I'm going to talk about how to graph two and four tenths as well as the opposite, which is negative two and four tenths, okay? Now to do that, first I have a basic number line right here and I am going to go over how to finish the number line, okay? So first I'm going to label my positive numbers and I'm going to label my negative numbers. Okay, now, so, Two and four tenths basically means two and four out of 10 equal sections, okay? So between two and three, somewhere here is 2.4, two and four tenths. Because the it says it's two and four out of 10, I need to have 10 equal sections. If I wanna have 10 equal sections, I always need to have one less than 10. So I need to have nine equal distance dashes in between, and that will create 10 equal sections. So this is my strategy. Draw the middle, which is the 0.5, okay? And then draw four to the left and four to the right, equal distance dashes. And then what happens is if you count, it has, five equal sections in between, uh, in between two and three, okay? And I'm gonna do the same thing here between negative two and negative three. I'm gonna draw one line in the middle and four to the left and four to the right, all right? And with that, I am going to start drawing or plotting the points. Uh, all right, so let's start with two and four tenths. So two and four tenths is right here. Pay close attention. So here's two, 2.1, 2.2, 2 2.3, here's 2.4. Do a close circle right there and then label it two and four tenths. Negative two and four tenths works the same way. Negative two, negative 2.1, negative 2.2, negative 2.3, negative 2.4 like that okay all right so um with using that same knowledge let's go ahead and graph negative four and six tenths as well as its opposite which is positive four and six tenths so just like before i'm going to label my positive and negative number line Then I'm going to draw nine equal distance dashes between negative four and negative five, as well as positive four and five. Okay, so line in the middle, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Line in the middle, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, like that. Now, negative 4.6. Here's negative four, negative 4.1, two, three, four, five, six, there's negative four and six tenths, positive 4.6, 4, 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18, 0.19, 0.20, 
equal distance dashes. Okay, so first let's go ahead and complete the number lines. Now, two and two thirds is going to be between two and three, and I need it's two and two thirds. My total, I need to have two, three equal sections here. So I'm going to draw two dashes. Notice how it creates three equal sections. I'm going to do the same thing between negative two and negative three. And I'm going to graph two and two thirds. So two, two and one third, two and two thirds right here. Negative two and two thirds, negative two, negative two and one third, negative two and two thirds. Using that same strategy, now I'm going to graph negative three and one fourth, as well as positive three and one fourth. So my denominator is four, that means I will be drawing three equal distant dashes. So first let me complete the number line. Okay, and between negative three and negative four, I'm gonna draw three equal distant dashes. One, two, three. And then between three and four, do the same thing. One, two, three, like that. Okay, so negative three and one fourth. Here's negative three. So negative three and one fourth is the first one. Positive three and one fourth. Here's positive three and one fourth. And that is how you graph the rational number, such as fractions and decimals and their opposites. Okay, now we're gonna go to page 21 and talk about absolute values. Now, please don't get absolute values confused with opposite numbers because oftentimes students get them confused because the definition sounds kind of similar. Remember, the definition of opposite numbers is Two numbers, opposite numbers are numbers that are the same distance from zero, but on the opposite side. Okay, that's the definition. Okay, the definition for um, absolute value is this. The absolute value of a number is oops, the distance between the number and zero on a number line. Okay, so that's why it's pretty similar. It talks about the distance, it has the number zero, okay? Absolute value of a number is the distance between that number and zero on a number line. Absolute value has a symbol. This is a symbol for absolute value, the two lines. So. If you have a number inside the two lines, it's basically saying what is the absolute value of that number. It's another way of saying what's the distance between zero and the number that goes inside the symbol, okay? So take a look right here. I have zero right here. Let's look at absolute value of two. What's the distance from zero to two? Well, one, two. It is two units or two. What about the absolute value of negative two? So here's zero, here's negative two. It's still two units from zero. So absolute value of negative two is also two. Absolute value of two is two. Absolute value of negative two is also two. Absolute value is always positive. The answer for absolute values are always positive. The reason is because distance is always positive. You will never see a negative distance, okay? So therefore, absolute values are always positive, okay? So with that, we're gonna graph these points and then, and then give the absolute values. Negative seven, five, positive seven, negative two, four, and negative four. 
Let's consider their absolute values. Okay, here's zero. So absolute values distance from zero to the given number. Absolute value of negative two would be two, two units from zero. What about absolute value of positive seven? So from zero to seven, it would be seven units. So seven. What would be the absolute value of negative seven? From zero to negative seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. See how the absolute values are always positive. So writing the answer for all of these absolute values is super easy. Absolute value of negative seven is seven. Absolute value of five is five. Absolute value of seven is seven. Absolute value of negative two is two. Absolute value of four is four. And absolute value of negative four is also four. Okay, now, before we answer A, uh, I'm sorry, one and four, we're gonna skip to four now. Okay, we're gonna very quickly answer these questions. Okay, so there's absolute value of negative 12 is 12, absolute value of 91, 91, absolute value of negative 55, 55, absolute value of zero is zero, absolute value of 88 is 88, and absolute value of one, is one. They're all positive. Okay. Um, so going up back up to one, it says which pairs of numbers have the same absolute value? Notice these two have the same answer. The absolute value is the same. And these two numbers have the same answer as well. So let's go ahead and answer the question. Absolute value of negative seven and Absolute value of positive seven are the same. As well as absolute value of four and absolute value of negative four are also the same. What do you notice about these numbers? Negative seven and positive seven, negative four and positive four. Those are opposite numbers. So they are opposites. Now, what do we realize about the absolute values of these opposite numbers? They were the same. So opposites have same absolute values. Okay. We're gonna skip number two for now. So going to number four, it says the temperature at night reached negative 13 degrees Fahrenheit. And then it says, write an equi equivalent statement about the temperature using the absolute value of the number. So first of all, I need to find out what is the absolute value of negative 13. Absolute value of negative 13 is, positive 13. Now, it says write an equivalent statement about the temperature, negative 13 degrees Fahrenheit, but using the absolute value, so using the number 13 without using the, uh, the symbol negative. That's what they're saying, okay? So this is how you would do it. The temperature at night, reached. And then instead of saying negative 13 degrees, the absolute value would be 13. And I need to say in words that has the same meaning as negative, which is 13 degrees below zero. By saying below zero, I am implying that this 13 is a negative without writing the negative symbol. So did I write an equivalent statement about the temperature using the absolute value of the number? Yes, I did. The absolute value of negative 13 is 13. And then I said below zero so that it doesn't mean positive 13. It means negative 13, okay? 
All right, finally, we're going to go back to page 24. And on the bottom, we're just going to find these absolute values. Absolute value of negative 4 and 5 tenths is 4 and 5 tenths. Remember, absolute values are always positive. Absolute value of 4 is 4. Absolute value of 1 and a half is 1 and a half. And finally, absolute value of negative 3 and 1 4 is 3 and 1 4. Okay. Uh, I didn't talk about it when I was teaching, but just quickly graphing. Okay. Um, here's. One, two, three, four, five, negative one, negative two. Okay, just briefly talking about where they are located. Four and five tenths is right in the middle. Okay. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I was supposed to graph negative four and five tenths. Sorry. Ah, here. And the absolute value of that, the distance from zero to that is. 4.5. So that's how I found it. Um, here's 4, and the distance between 0 to 4 is 4. 1 and a half, which is right here. The distance from 0 to 1 and a half is 1 and a half. And finally, negative 3 and 1 fourth. Negative 3 and 1 fourth is right here. Hold on. I need three equal distant dashes between negative three and negative four. Negative three and one fourth would be like right here. What's the distance from zero to that number? One, two, three, and one fourth. So absolute value was three and one fourth. Okay. All right. So that is it. Thank you.